welcome back for another book talk video. It's science fiction Sunday time, and I'm talking Red Rising. I've already done a video about book one, a video about books two and three. They came out in 2014, 2015, 2016, and all three books in the first Red Rising trilogy were award-winning science fiction novels. They're absolutely spectacular. I always highly recommend them. Everyone I know who's read them has had positive things to say and enjoyed the novels. Now it's time to talk about books four and five. We got the first trilogy, 2014, 2015, 2016. The author, Pierce Brown, I guess in 2017, needed some time off. Or maybe he was working on the graphic novel prequel stuff then. I don't know. Maybe he had another project. But in 2018, we got the book Iron Gold, which is the beginning of a new trilogy. Technically fourth book in the series, but really the two trilogies are very different. And then the next year in 2019, we got book four. Five. Book five is called Dark Age. So, of course, we as fans were expecting in the year 2020 to get book six. But, you know, 2020 and 2021 have been odd years. So I think it's completely understandable that we still don't have book six. But hopefully, Pierce Brown is going to get that book six to us sometime soon. I've got to tell you from the bottom of my heart... I was happy with the first trilogy and the way that it ended. And I would have been perfectly fine with the story ending there. I thought, we don't need more. We don't have to have more stories. But Pierce Brown wrote them. And when I went to read book four in the series, I didn't bother reading the blurb on the back. I just got right into it. And I was shocked and frustrated because I did not know that Pierce Brown was changing the point of view. The first trilogy, all three books are from the point of view of Darrow. He's our protagonist. He's our central character. He's a really fascinating person. He suffers through a whole lot in order to try and achieve his goals and to try to change society and make things better. But in book four, we're getting multiple points of view. Darrow still exists. One of the points of view is Darrow, but we're getting a bunch of other characters. And I found that very frustrating simply because I didn't know that going in. You know how expectations are. If someone would have set me down, said, look, Jeremy Fee, you need to understand before you read this book, it's not all about Darrow anymore. It's about the after effects of the revolution from the first trilogy. It's about how, despite their great efforts, there have been a lot of casualties, a lot of people have suffered, and society still is not a perfect utopia. I would have understood that. If someone would have said Pierce Brown is really exploring the ramifications, the repercussions of the war and the situation would have gone, ah, that makes sense, and I would have enjoyed it more. So I want to make sure you know that before you read them, if you haven't read it yet. Please understand, you're gonna get a bunch of different points of view. They are interesting characters, and I would urge you not to resent them for not being Darrow, like I did upon the first read. I went back to reread it. I listened to the audiobook, and knowing the story already and knowing what was gonna happen, I really enjoyed it a lot more upon a reread. One of the characters is a mercenary who I think is a fascinating character who is a rogue. I always like roguish characters and you don't really know if you can trust this guy and what he's doing and what's going on. Another character is this woman who is just trying to survive. She's suffering so much and you really get to see the discrimination against the lower class through her character, which I think helps a lot. Another one of the characters I don't want to tell you too much about because of spoilery things and in case you haven't read the first trilogy, but it's a character left over from the first trilogy. Book four ended in a way that I felt was a bit shocking, and I, I just want to make sure you understand that when you go to read the second trilogy, you're going to want to have book five ready to go probably so that when you finish book four, you can find out what happens next. And then book five is going to have a lot more twists and turns, a lot more surprises and points of view. Okay, just prepare yourself. What's nice about book five, though, is I don't know if Pierce Brown heard some feedback from book four or if he always planned it this way, but a lot of book five, even when it's not 
focusing on Darrow. It's still focusing on those characters from the original trilogy. So it'll, it'll still focus on Mustang or Severo or somebody who odds are you cared about in the first few books. So I do like that about book five. I think that helps kind of fix the point of view issue some. But also after book four, there's a chance you're going to like those characters from book four some more and be more willing to take in their story in book five. But my goodness, I have no idea what book six is going to be like, and I'm not sure how long we're going to have to wait for book six. So this is one of those issues to where I would tell you I highly recommend that you read the first three books of the first trilogy because it's got a nice ending to it. And if you're the kind of person who wants a complete story, then you probably want to wait for book six to come out before you read books four and five. Because again, at the end of book five, you're left in a situation where you want the next book. You want to know what's going to happen next. But it's a sign of good writing. It's the sign of a good story. I enjoy Red Riding because of the great space combat in the first trilogy, because of the great strategy. These are characters who really do engage in critical thinking. And the villains in this story are really characters who are an intellectual match for the characters you're rooting for in the story. So that's a lot of fun as well. Other than that, I guess my only other comment would be the world building is still really great in books four and five. You learned a lot about the reds and the golds in books one through three. You learned some about the obsidians, but I feel like you get a lot more of the obsidians with books four and five, which is great. All right, I've talked for a long time, so I'll go ahead and bring it to a close. I highly recommend these books. And if you're willing to wait for the sixth book, then by all means, go ahead and read them. Every day is a good day for a book talk. Peace.